Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Tiano the Lasses of Europe in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Irkutsk leader Yagoda at least for now. But if you'd like to read about a split in the family as well as a legacy of the Union which I believe I both read please go right ahead. So please come back home and yes son make yes I did. And Comrade Yagoda will make sure they all pay for it. Now um, <clears throat> I played as Irkutsk before however there's uh, someone does want me to go with the party path, because last time I went for the state, and apparently, supposedly, the guy we want to get, Besanov, he's going to be removed eventually, so that's why we're playing as him, to try out the party faction, because like, like I said last time we did the state, um, but I don't mind rereading the focuses, because I like the focuses a lot. Uh, comrades, brothers and sisters, workers and peasants of the Irkutsk Oblast, on behalf of the Soviet Presidium, we ask you to remain vigilant as the very existence of our Soviet motherland is at stake. Taking advantage of our weakness against the forces of Rajewski and Pasternak, deserters and traitors under the leadership of Valery Salblin are attempting to organize a revisionist insurgency, raising a dark and brutal mob to its ignoble cause and forcefully mobilizing them to commit unspeakable crimes against the working people. In the time of the existential challenge to our beloved union, we ask you to not succumb to provocation to the Salblinite counter-revolutionaries, and direct all your efforts to fight the internal enemy. We warn you that the Soviet power will remain unshakable in its merciless attitude against treason. Any person engaged in the anti-Soviet activities or involved in encouraging or harboring the insurgents will be held accountable and be subjected to the most severe punishment. And the shadows would be kind of nice in the capital. I like the political power, which I'm pretty sure I went down that way last time. I know I went through a lot of these, but I honestly cannot remember which way I went. Oh, but you get more growth of that one. But it's not much more. It's not bad. Um, capital is really nice. 14 days, 14 days. More stability. Let's do that one first. In the shadows. The greatest weapon left in our arsenal is our intelligence apparatus. When Russia fractured, it was the agents of the NKVD who kept the Union alive, and carved out a new home for the revolution in Irkutsk. The operatives and spies of the NKVD are some of the most experienced in the world. The time has come uh, to use them against Soblin and his gang of traitors, and tear apart the upstart rebellion from within. The fragile new government across Lake Baikal is a perfect target for infiltration and sabotage. It's run by inexperienced amateurs trying to figure out how to run a nation as they go. Our agents will have no trouble infiltrating it by posing as traitors or double agents, and in many cases, they won't even need to hide their identities. Before long, the Parsons will be in disarray with all their plans and secrets laid bare before us. Now, I'm doing something slightly different here. Uh, we have infantry up here, which I want to send to the south, while well, we have motorized down here, and I'm trying to send to the north. So that's why I'm not really trying to move too much just yet, because I want to make sure that both front lines will be at least slightly, slightly, slightly stable, of course. Of course, infantry is taking their sweet booty time to get up there, but what else is new? All right, so that's the case. They want to move through here. We can do the response in the shadows. And the Director of State Security, Radar Station... I like the Radar Station. The Ministry of Propaganda. In times of war, propaganda can make the difference between victory and defeat. It is essential that friendly morale can be kept high and enemy morale be kept low. The current rebellion is no exception in the Ministry of Propaganda, or Ministry of Propaganda, has been hard at work in making sure everyone knows that their victory is inevitable. They have recently completed their preparations for a two-pronged propaganda offensive for soldiers on both sides of the front line. We will inspire our own brave, loyal soldiers with tales of bravery performed by the comrades, and by reminding them of the long legacy of resistance and heroism they are continuing. We'll bombard the traitors' bandits. With propaganda proving the superiority of our troops and exposing the misguided fools they have followed into battle against their own countrymen. Putting down the traitors. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. We will do what must be done, as well as two brothers. Tales old as time. Well, I guess you could try that if you really wanted to. Um, here. Try that. Alright, last conquest. Ooh. Yeah, maybe I should not have moved that, but I want to try something else. If you want to about the modern book of tier, please go right ahead. Cool. Anything else? No. War planning, that's okay. It's fine. Whatever. House divided. Now, these guys have logistics, which is very nice, which we do want to use quite a bit, but let's get there. In the shadows, Ministry of Propaganda, then let's grab the in capital. Salvin's rebellion has exposed the key weaknesses within our central government. It's a travesty that the traitors managed to advance their cause at this point without the institutions of the state managing to stamp them out. Immediate steps must be taken to make sure that the holes in the government that led to this present situation are plugged. Once the partisans have been crushed, the government must be ready to, must be ready to quickly reintegrate the territory that they stole from us and crack down on any remaining dissent that may emerge. We must also begin a review of our government to see how this rebellion escaped our notice. This will not be allowed to happen again, and not if the Union is to have any hope of surviving. Pretty much. Pretty much. And you're there. You're there. Come on. Happy 1962, everybody. Uh, since we're here, we've got a lot of electricity, which is really nice. Uh, we're going to increase our growth. Growth. Yay. Oh, would you look at that? They immediately started attacking us. All 
Alright, then what? They're trying to retreat that way. Um, I do want to destroy the division at the top, though. Why don't you just move so slowly? So, then again, so it is motorized. If that's the case, and you go up there, you might struggle a lot against those guys. So, in the meantime, we'll get encircled here. So, we do this. Fine, and we just beat the crap out of them. Is this a much? Oh, it is a mountain. Oh, okay, that's not attacking them. In the capital? Mm, equipment? Yes. Growth? Oh, yes. We love growth. And in the Presidium. The necessary reforms to our apparatus of the state will be handled by the Presidium of the Soviet Union. In these troubled towns, the Presidium can be served as a beacon of stability to guide us through the storm. While the military and the NKVD handle the matters of crushing the rebellion, the politicians of the Presidium will work to make sure that normalcy is maintained as much as possible in a time of war. Investigations of the Presidium itself must also take place, both internal and external. If any traders remain hidden within our government, we must sniff them out. More important than that, though, is the lack of oversight within the Presidium that allows the rebellion's leaders to continue their plot. In the new Presidium, such things will not be possible. Hmm. You should hold. Get there up there first. My gosh, it takes so long. We're not even making more divisions because we are already out of equipment, which sucks. Come on. And you're there? Yes, you are. Go. Help out. Should be able to do okay there. Well, keep moving through here so you can take the territory at least. You should honestly be able to win through. I know it's over a river and such, but... Um, they should be running out of equipment as well. In the capital? Good. And the Presidium. Party faction? Favor of the state. More stability would be pretty nice. Increased state influence. Party influence. Persuade the party faction? Now we're good. And then an ironclad union. Um... Decryption is not bad. Recovery rate, more war support. Remember the revolution. Sullivan has attempted to reclaim or claim the mantle of Leninist revolution, painting himself as a true Leninist, and his band of scum as spiritual successors to the October Revolution. While well, this is obviously nonsense, many of our citizens have fallen under the sway of these lies. We must prove that we carry the torch of the workers' revolution, while the partisans are nothing more than deceitful reactionaries. The Ministry of Propaganda will launch a campaign based on Sullivan's messages. Remember the October Revolution, staying true to Lenin's goals and so forth, but we will do it better. Sullivan is stuck with a group of ideologues and intellectuals quoting theory to each other, while we have the team of professional propagandists working with a proper budget to spread our message far and wide. Now, I'm not really making any divisions here, which is probably a mistake, but you know, whatever. NKVD Brigade, not bad. There you go, do that if you can. Enforce it. This is so stupid. <clears throat> we have only four divisions, and these guys are not even that good, so. And they have five. That's unfair. Come on, man. You guys actually win here? This is a hell no. You should easily win here. If we start losing, and these divisions actually start crapping out, you know what? Don't even do anything. You, you guys are god awful. This is really bad. Like, this is ridiculously bad. Holy crap. This is bad. Why? Oh, I hate, I hate fighting the far east in the trenches. Um, remember the revolution. That'd be good. Um, persuade the party faction. We can wait. Just wait. We don't need to spend a PP immediately, right? Of course not. We're going to maybe slowly win there. We'll see. Let him move on in for now. Can you actually do anything here? God, there's so many goddamn mountains here. And the Director of State Security. When one is waging a war with subterfuge and espionage, defense is even more critical than offense. As we uncover the secrets of the end rebellion, we must take precautions to make sure they do not uncover ours as well. The NKVD's internal service apparatus, the Director of State Security, is responsible for this vital mission. Partisan operations are notoriously hard to stamp out, but if there's anyone who can do it, it's them. Members of the government who display anything less than total loyalty will be placed under surveillance, as will anyone else who was associated with known traitors before they begin the revolt. Agents will be posted in every town and city, keeping their ears to the ground for any sign of trouble. Patrols will sweep the countryside and intercept infiltrators, or Kursk shall become an intelligence black hole. Nice. That should help out at least slightly, right? How can you not win here, for the love of God? I get it, it's over a river, but Jesus Christ, this is stupid. They are only militia. Militia is incredibly weak. It's because they have recon. Get in there before they do. Come on. Come on. There you go. 
an American Saldonite. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. An ironclad union. In the trenches. The soldiers of the Union have endured the unimaginable. We must now ask them to endure more. They are a shield against the traitors and partisans who seek to finish what the Germans started all those years ago. If the Union is to survive, we'll have to do everything we can to support the men fighting on the front line and for a cause. By ensuring deliverance of food, equipment, and weapons reliably, make it on time to the soldiers who need them, we can make the heckish conditions of Siberian warfare slightly more bearable. We can cycle between front line and reserve duty, allowing them to recover and fight more effectively when it is time to return to the battlefield. We're going to let our morale falter in the face of yet another threat. How can we not? Oh my god, the game. I hate this game. I hate, not this game, but like. If you want to read about both these, please go ahead. This is god awful. I'm not going to read those just because this is stupid. You know what? Fine. Leave them there. I'm done. I'm done with this. Are you kidding me? This is not balanced at all. If you want to read about those, please go ahead. Jesus Christ, this is incredibly infuriating. You can't take anyone out. There's just no chance. There's no hope. You can't do this. Are you kidding me? I did this before, and this is. Force it. Force it. Force it. Kill them off. Jesus Christ, just kill them off. This is pissing me off way too much to begin our campaign like this. Like, this is stupid. They're not even suffering attrition. You know it's not balanced when they don't even suffer attrition, man. I'm done with that. And the Directorate of Construction, though. Akutsk is the main economic and industrial hub of Eastern Siberia, but we have been hurt by the rebellion. Large portions of our military industry and infrastructure have fallen under the control of uh, Salvin's bandits at a moment when we need them most. To make up for this, the Directorate of Construction will have to make for some accommodations for military. Factory space would have been otherwise gone to other projects that have been cleared for military production. Infrastructure projects that have been well benefit the military have been accelerated while civilian constructions have been postponed indefinitely. Until we recover our stolen industry, we must get everything back or get everything we have out of what remains. But to keep our arms supplied and on the move no matter the cost. Yeah, the AI is cheating. Because they don't, now they're suffering attrition? I don't think so. I really don't think so. They've been there for more than long enough to get uh, penalized. But so, supplemental labor battalions. We need all, all hands on deck to defeat the Sablonites, even those who might have failed us before. The gulags of our nation are filled with physically incapable inca prisoners eager to prove their redemption and earn their freedom, or at the very least, a redid sentence. We will create a program of labor battalions formed from volunteers from the gulags who will supplement our military engineers and aid field constructions for the duration of the rebellion. Of course, we must be careful with these volunteers. Many of them have attempted to betray us before, and exposure to any rebel or propaganda could easily incite them to do so again. To incentivize loyalty, any volunteers to complete their work without incident will be rewarded with a modest reduction in the sentence. The last thing we want is a mass prisoner revolt behind our lines. Thanks for making this impossible, devs. And I'm already complaining about the devs. Do they even play this? Do they even try? I get it's supposed to be somewhat difficult, but like, Jesus Christ, this is not fun. Let me guess, you can't win here. Hold on, I never did this, too. Hold on, get back, get that back. Can we actually defeat and de destroy this division? Can we destroy any division? This isn't even mountains. It's forest. Come on. If they want to circle us here, we'll just go around and circle them down. Just go straight for the capital. Yeah, they're not even taking nutrition anymore. I mean... This is obviously... Why? Who designed it like this? Paradox, probably. On the defense of the Ministry. Or the Ministry of Defense. Fires and rebellion must quickly be crushed without mercy or hesitation. To this effect, to go to order the Ministry of Defense to immediately shift the nation to, from, to a war footing from until the Eastern Rebellion has been fully stamped out. Certain areas of the economy shall shift production of military materials, while others will continue to operate, but in a modified fashion. Military rations will be temporarily prioritized over the civilian food supply, while several factories currently producing civilian goods will begin converting or being converted to weapons foundries. Another step the Ministry of Defense has been ordered to take is the issuing of the museum pieces. These antiquated weapons they backed up even before the Second World War and turned up and kept in storage. The Ministry will issue these weapons to our reserve units focusing on hunting partisans operating in their own territory. This is sad. This is just so sad. It's pathetically bad and, and god-awfully sad. Oh, did you actually delete a division? Huh, I doubt it. I really doubt it. If you die here, then it's over. I mean, we're done. Like, this campaign's over already. Please. This is stupid. How are we doing better against these guys when they have engineers and artillery support? 
Makes no sense. NKVD guard detachments. And the Union's Dark Sours, NKVD that rescued the President Demon, evacuated it to Kirkutsk. Now, when we are forced to fight for survival once more, the NKVD showed deliver us victory again. Some of the most experienced soldiers in our nation are members of the NKVD guards currently. These men are scattered in small groups around the country, serving as bodyguards, intelligence officers, and secret police, but they could be of greater use if you organize them into a full military division. This, this new NKVD motor rifle division will be the tip of the spear that will skewer the traitors with. The ragtag bandits won't stand a chance against the disciplined ruthlessness of the finest soldiers of the Soviet Union. Once we have defeated the Partisans, this new division will be instrumental to reclaim our to a reclamation of Siberia, and eventually all of Russia. That's good. Dad don't want us to, you know. Not to me. Find him, kill him. Do not light up. Go a river? Of course. Into a mountain? Of course. So stupid. So incredibly stupid. Force it. Seriously, kill yourselves. Just literally kill yourselves if you can't win here. You do anything there? is so bad. Go straight for there, and then go down to there. Are you doing so? Mm. And I'm glad you knew mobile inter interrogation centers. Sometimes, uh, time is of the essence of prisoners with viable information cannot be transported back to secure locations quickly enough. Extracting information is already a time-consuming process without the added delay. Or bringing a captured asset to an interrogation room and then having to take the information they divulge back to the front lines. The solution to this problem is simple. Bring the interrogation room to the front lines. By refitting a number of trucks to carry intelligence officers. We specialize in information extraction and wet work. As well as the tools they use to carry out their jobs, we can greatly increase the speed and efficiency of our interrogations of the night prisoners. As an added bonus, the trucks may acquire such a reputation that the unpleasant methods of our interrogators may be rendered unnecessary. The fear of these trucks alone will eat, break even the most hardened partisan. I doubt it. An unclad union. There's no time for dissenting voices or questioning authority. The union is facing a crisis that threatens to destroy. A crisis which was born out of disunity. Some of the government see the rebellion as a chance of advancing their own agendas or push for their pet reforms while our attention is elsewhere. As backroom maneuvering is allowed to go unchecked to expel our demise. You could order that all factionalism within the president and the government as a whole must end immediately. For the duration of the crisis, only authorized motions pertaining to it may be discussed and implemented. Any attempts to subvert this order will find just how serious we are. There may be eventually a day when we can afford the luxury of allowing constructive criticism from within our ranks. Today is not that day, though. Man, this is just... And we're gonna win now, but like my, my Jesus Christ, this was terrible. This is one of the most terrible times I've actually had to do crap like this. Give me a place. Can we actually win against militia or no? Like, this is pissing me off way too much. We can't win against militia. Now I get it, it's mountains. Now that makes sense. There, but like up here? This tile? Pfft. Please. You're gonna force the attack. Because what else are we gonna do? You might as well. Oh, this is so stupid. I'm glad you knew. And, oh, we actually won, huh? The Union forever. Victory's at hand. After months of fighting, we finally driven back the traitors and preparing to kill, kill, uh, kill, uh, kill, uh, kill and blow. This coward sought to destroy the Union when it was at the weakest, but they failed to learn the lessons of history. The Germans with the mightiest army to ever march across Europe cannot destroy us, no one can. They knew their only chance was to strike while their back was turned, and even they failed. Once the victory's been secured, it'll be time to begin rebuilding a fractured territory. This hopeless rebellion never had a chance to top in the Soviet Union, but it will change it. Certainly, we cannot revert to the old status quo that allowed this to happen in the first place. We'll never be able to reclaim Russia if we're constantly occupying or constantly occupied fighting rebellions and partisans. No matter the, or what happens, we'll go forward knowing the victory's assured. The Union shall not, must not fall. This is, like I said, god awful. The balance here, Jesus Christ, this is not fun. It was absolutely one of the worst things I've done so far in a long time. I hate the Far East so much. It is the worst area ever to fight in, but the Union victorious. <clears throat> the people of the Soviet Union have done it, comrades. Uh, the rebellious Sablonites have been utterly smashed, and we've emerged victorious from the battle in full glory. We've proven our strength once more, showing our neighbors that we will not go down without a fight. However, just because the battle's been finished does not mean that this is time for celebration. It is time for us to regroup and re bring justice to the Sablonites. It's time for the Soviet Union to cut the final piece of thread that our opposition dangles off of, and to show the Sablonites that we, the people of the Union, still remain vigilant and more powerful even in our most dire state. Yeah, this is... I'm sorry that I'm so pissed off already. But, like, this is... Mm, not very good. Party influence? Sure, why not? More party. We like the party. Putting legitimacy, tactical lessons, the Great Purge. Oh, slightly worsened. Oh, boy. We well, probably should get through all this stuff as fast as possible. Party influence? The recruits trials? Yeah, we probably want to blow through a lot of this stuff. 
as fast as possible. The Great Purge. <clears throat> <clears throat> the Soviet Union cannot allow a counter-revolutionary revolt on the scale to ever occur again. If Russia is ever rise from the ashes and show the Union as a stable entity, then a regional administration must not allow these rebels to ever rise up against the government. We need to strike the source of the problem, incompetent and corrupt. A Great Purge is sorely needed to ensure a government stays indivisible. Those officials that are incompetent to lead and administrate must be gathered up. What awaits them will either be a firing squad or locked in prison, or locked them in prison, or expulsion from the party depending on the heinousness of the crimes. For a especially corrupt tyrant, appointment of the back of the shed and bull in the head would be the most benefiting course, a befitting course of action. One cannot have a stable union if its people are being represented so incompetently. If you'd like to read about the Great Purge, please go right ahead, but screams and gunshots echoed through the night. Yay! Because I know I've heard that one before. And we're assemble the commission. Uh, it's crucial that we enact a purge to effectively remove the filth lurking within our framework. In order to do so, however, we will establish a commission that is able to collect information from the suspected officials and disposing of them through any means necessary. The members of the commission, however, cannot be composed of regular NKVD officials and fear of them compromising our efforts, so we'll have to scout and recruit talented individuals from the, within the NKVD's ranks that possess necessary skills in order for our plans to come into fruition. After all, it would be impossible to commit to an internal purge without a proper commission to handle the dirty work in the service of the people of the Soviet Union. And then agree cause suspect personnel. We have a lot of suspects noted by the NKVD for potential punishment. Whether their track record are far a lot more minor cases than sh sh simply sheer incompetence, or more extreme cases of corruption, we'll need to remove them from their positions of the, for the necessary steps of the purge. However, while the people we are purging might have been incompetent at their job or might have had traces of corruption, we cannot just remove them from their positions and leave them in an empty void. Those positions will need to be filled. We will instigate some temporary personnel to fill their shoes in their jobs. We cannot leave such a powerful power gap or else we could further be stabilizing the Union, which wouldn't be very good. Ah, oh, yes. An afternoon swim. If you want to do that, please go right ahead. Lake by call sure is beautiful. And also, I made these guys 18 come with because the divisions we had were, were okay. But this is better and I, I will never understand how five militia battalions are able to hold off like 12 infantry battalions and stuff like that. Just doesn't make any sense to me, man. There goes the lobster war. The investigations. Well, nobody can remain out of the NKVD's grasp for long. It's become clear that some of the suspects we are closing in on are simply entrenched too deep into the political machine to be removed easily. Now, that the commission has been assembled, we shall begin a wide series of investigations to gather evidence on those corrupt officials who foolishly assume that we are untouchable, or they are untouchable. With luck, we shall find something concrete and continue to make arrests. Once we have enough material on to start the crackdowns in earnest, however, the question remains as to how to properly deal with the arrested officials. With the evidence in hand, the commission will move to determine the severity of the suspects' crimes and therefore the severity of their punishment. While most of these parasites will no doubt be found to be enemies of the state and will be purged for idiotic crimes against people, there may be some who are not too far gone and can be encouraged to realize the errors of their ways. Once the evidence has been gathered and reviewed, the final decision whether or not to show clemency with minor offenders will ultimately rest on comedy, good, and NKVD. And if you want to read about a day of rest, please go right ahead. A quiet day and late. Bye, call. Yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm not going to read anything until we get to best enough, so. Because that's definitely going to be different for us. Uh, so, why not? The investigations. Anything here? No? Okay. Bears of the Union? Ah, a piece of party, yes. More stability? No balance faction? Nice. Virtually this state increases party influence by a little bit. You want more party? We like to party. We can ministry powers. Ooh. We got more here. More stability? Why not? Alright, so this one. Various appointments will be made throughout the People's Commissariat of the USSR, and new industrial regulations will be enacted to do what? Oh, Serbian Black Army, god dang it. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Uh, we should do a relatively okay against them, since we made our divisions a little thicker. And actually, deploying you here right now would be okay. Hey, look at that. Look how that worked out. Of course, our economy... Honestly, that's really good for where we're at right now. So that's actually really good. So. Um, uh, closer supervision, higher labor standards. Increased party influence by a small amount will get reorganized ministries, way more political power, production, efficiency, retention, research speed, loose factor output though, but you know what, I have to go do that one. That'd be okay with us. We got 10 days left. We got a while, it's not bad. Um, and then zero tolerance. Well, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead, but zero tolerance, even though I want to get more political power. We cannot condone any corrupt and incompetent incompetence to hold the, continue holding the governing positions. From the lowest bureaucrat to the highest minister, any person kind of prosecuted within a purge won't be reinstated. In any position under no circumstances. When no quarter shall be spared for any mice caught in our mousetraps, those who were spared won't ever be allowed to re-enter the political scene in the Union ever again. The damage done while they held power was already terrible if we let them return. The amount of damage they could do to our administration would be immeasurable. The Soviet Union cannot risk degenerate officials like them crawling their way back under administration unless they corrode the system once more. Which is obviously something we're trying to avoid, but you know. 
Well, the motorized made it, even though, my god, they, they sucked really hard. These guys look a little weak, but then again, you never know. Ooh, people's revolutionary council. Uh, I don't really want to raid them. Yakutia, Cheetah has not been raided. Um, we could try it, but... Alright, so what's going to happen here? <clears throat> so, can we win against these militias? No, they're not even militia. They have a militia icon, but they have just infantry there and recon. I don't understand this anymore. Good job, guys. One more attack. Come here, just in case. Two. You know what? It'd be good to save just in case. That's usually a good idea to save whenever you need to. Thank you. Now, those are doing better now than the beginning of this episode. My god, I apologize for raging earlier, but just it, it's so frustrating. It's so incredibly frustrating playing this mod sometimes. Especially in the Far East. Um, anything down here? Piece of state faction? No, we're good. Establish a KGB? Well, we'll see. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. That's a lot of encryption and decryption. Uh, okay. Sure. We'll do them first. Well, what do they say? They say, should be paid. I like that a lot. Can we actually raid these guys too now? That'd be really cool if we could. Nice. Nine million in debt? Could be worse. Can we actually raid him too? I guess we can. An investigation. Stability. Records for trials. If you want to bow into the files, please go ahead. Time to get to work. Oh wow. Overturn administration with per administrations purged. With way more political power. Holy crap. The time has come. Our investigation has been completed. Our judicial approach has been decided upon. We must now act to complete our purge of the state's enemies. We'll bring those identified as guilty through whatever means to trial. We'll show the people directly that these counter-revolutionary elements, corrupt officials, traitors, parasites, and others cannot escape judgment. And once they're finally gone, the state will last be secure. We will make sure of it. Well, we'll try. We'll probably lose, but whatever. Oh, we're up here now. Oh, we're actually... There's a division here. Comrade Maxim. Uh, I think I read this one before as well. So, if you're going to do this, please go ahead. Oh, they're up here. Nice. Yeah, I don't understand. We can beat up infantry, but we just can't beat up militia. I, I, I don't understand. I really don't. Then again, I guess I'm not made to understand. Uh, there you go. That'd be nice. Six quality divisions ain't bad. Alright, and no debt. Food for the hungry. We did do the ex uh, expenditure thing earlier too, but you know, off screen. I did do the warlord development stuff down here too. Party looking good. People might rate us, but you know, I'm okay with that right now. We, of course, have no war support, but whatever. Remove administration's purge. Wow, we have minus 50% political power. We're still getting over one a day. Holy crap. Holy cow. Reorganized. Alright. Flight East, state repopulation programs. Arcus Kadro Electric Stations. Securocracy? Securocracy. 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 And better than, of course. Happy 1963, everybody. Good trials. Ah. We like to party. And then, lessons from the lessons from Stalin? Oh, we're building a legitimacy. The great and powerful Soviet Union has been shattered, and we've all but disintegrated on the world stage. This is a catastrophe for every person within the Union. We've been torn apart from the inside ever since the German invasion of our Union, falling apart piece by piece until we've been diminished to our current state. But we won't give up so easily with such a setback. We won't give up so, uh, in order to accomplish our goals, our government's legitimacy must be restored. Back to when we were truly recognized as the leaders of Russia. No matter the means that we are to take our approach for the reclamation of the Union, we must regain our spot among the great powers once more and return to the people of Russia to the rightful place on the world stage. Nice. 
Uh, did I do workers yet? No, I've not. Workies, thank you. <clears throat> well, since we have so much political power, I don't mind doing some of this. Another production unit? Why not? Everything else looks really good, but I want to wait. Economy, a little bit of deficit, that's fine. We're very mediocre right now, which is fair. It's not fair, but it's, it makes sense. And uh, that's going down too, which is great. This is motorized. Not bueno, bueno. Do we have any... How much artillery do we have? How many guns do we have? How much motorized do we have? Transport helicopters, we have no motorized. We got some artillery. Some empty tank. Uh, you know what? Do with that. Why not? All right. There are good trials. Oh, so we get plus 25% political power, which is nice. Uh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. There's part of the increase influence of the party. Open fire? No, well, we're going to do this one. So, internal affair. I did this one last time, which was fun. Bolts with NKVD presence, which is not bad. And a secure union, which is actually pretty good, too. But, we're going to go with a letter of unions. Since the fall of our union decades ago, opportunists, counter-revolutionaries, and fools alike have fought an unceasing war to destroy our legitimacy. A Salvinite rebellion was the last in a long line of betrayals and traitors' acts, each designed to lead to the masses astray towards their own inevitable destruction. After so many brushes with, with annihilation, many in the Presidium believe it's time to turn, high time to turn inward. We have always acted with their best interests at heart. It's clear that much of our population has lost faith in the government's ability to uphold the ideals of the revolution and provide for them. In light of this, in an attempt to ex expedite reintegration of the Buryat ASSR, we'll begin a new campaign, one of 1,000 letters, <clears throat> named out of the 17th century uh, Republic of Letters. We'll attempt to foster a similar culture of innovation, open criticism in all levels of government. We'll be encouraged, so long as it is constructive. Workers and bureaucrats alike will be asked to mail in their thoughts and concerns regarding their reunification struggle, or our reunification struggle. All of such actions will lead to an efficient administration, attraction of distant intellectuals, and a renewed sense of connection between the masses and the vanguard party. We lose political power. We get way more stability, though, every week. We lose a lot of encryption. Ideology drift defense goes pretty down, and more daily time support for about a year. Increased party influence. Yeah, pretty much. More party. Ooh, yes. Right against these guys. Make it easy for us. Yes, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Necessary reforms. The Thousand Letters campaign has proven to be exceptionally fruitful. Peasants and bureaucrats are alike have risen to the occasion, making use of this unique opportunity for critical uh, expression directed to the Presidium itself. We have received well over 1,000 letters, each detailing workplace grievances and various administrative efficiencies <clears throat> or inefficiencies. However, perhaps one of the most encouraging results of our efforts has been the expansion of legitimacy among the formerly rebellious Buryat ASSR. While it's true that the eastern shores of Lake Baikal were relatively timid in composing letters, <clears throat> those that we collected have proven highly valuable. In addition, the lack of a crackdown upon those who have spoke freely seems to have eased tensions. Acts of sabotage are steadily declining. It appears that we just might be able to deprogram these taken hostage by opportunism. Yeah. Now comes the time of transformation. <clears throat> From words we have devised actions, increases in low-level pay, a tempered five-year grain quota, and the closing of managerial loopholes. These programs, as well as other collected reforms, will soon be implemented to compound upon that trust we have built. Let us make haste. And beat the living crap out of the Saka Republic. Thank you for refusing tribute. I feel bad for this nation, but I think it's going to get uh, redone in the future anyway, so I'm a, oh, I don't really care too much. Very, very good. Um, and let's keep going with these guys. There, not really, and necessary reforms. People's Union, not bad. Ah, oh, this one, a new central authority. <clears throat> Even after the mutiny ended, there was still a large amount of discontent in the Baratia territories. Furthermore, the mutiny required us to basically rebuild the bureaucracy, as we cannot truly ensure the loyalty of many of the Baratian bureaucrats. But as we increased patrols, began a process of integrating or reintegration. <clears throat> the discontent from Baratia slowly died down, eventually dissipating entirely. Finally, efforts have paid off as the Baratian lands have finally been fully, fully reintegrated and get more admin efficiency, which is great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Strengthen the right army. Ooh. And relax media censorship. Ooh. Jurisdiction of the red army over matters pertaining to national security will be increased, eroding NKVD influence over the domestic military affairs. Army experience gain goes up quite a bit more, and more experience, and worse for it. And we'll do this one too eventually as well. 
Savage KGB. New intelligence agency with jurisdiction over foreign intelligence uh, will be established, eroding NKVD influence over at foreign affairs. Ooh, agriculture, schools, do schools first. And elect a new premier. Okay, we'll get there. And relax media censorship. To foster strong and rich proletarian culture, censorship and repression of media shall be relaxed. A new board set up to approve literary work for publishing. All right, cool. A woman in Turkey. Turkey, I. <clears throat> Strength and mandate. And of course, we get through all this stuff, and then we'll go through the center here, and then we'll do continuing course. Trend by Kal Principality. Oh, you're there. Yeah, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Yeah, you should be fine. A people's Union. For too long, the people of the USSR have seen the government as a distant and uncaring monolith. Such content, discontent within the system only breeds long term issues, and it's a problem that we must solve. We must stress the idea that the President of Nicaragua will care for the people, and the concept that it is the well being of the people that comes here first in the Union. Speeches shall be conducted, and propaganda to end this will be spread across the lands, but we must ensure that these are not empty words by, by actually supporting the people. Maybe costly, but it help us gain a new sense of legitimacy, something that we need more now than ever. Not bad. You can get that guy too. It doesn't matter to me right now. Uh, 1.3 is pretty good. Could be better, but it could be, could be worse. Because we still have... Uh, not that one. Union letters is n not bad. It's going to help us with stability, but still. You could definitely use more war sport, though. Oh, boy. Sure, why not? We'll rate him. I think we can do okay against these guys. No, uh, just kidding. Oh, God. Okay, maybe not. How much arty do we have? 139. One more soft attack, man. Well, I guess we'll see. Just a little bit. Or just go there. Oh, no. You ding-dongs. Yeah, just go there, man. People's Union. Ooh. More interesting in max funding? Yes, please. A strength mandate. It seems that our efforts have fully paid off. The strengthening of security combined with the propaganda showcasing the fact that the presidium cares for the people has allowed us to acquire a new mandate. The people must trust us more and more and believe that we're the best path towards uh, for Russia. Even in Barati, the people now trust us over Salva. This new sense of legitimacy means that we can embark on further efforts without having to worry about discontent for the people. The USSR may have been brought low, but we will restore its glory. And, like earlier, let's save again. It's already August. 63. Man. We're moving pretty quickly. I love it. <clears throat> and we have 10 production units, which is pretty darn decent, too. Can we actually win here? I don't know. I kind of doubt it. They have a lot of forts, too. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Two point nine percent ain't too bad. Exercise, which is fine. We should all exercise at least a little bit every every once in a while, especially during every week. Yeah, that minor deficit is not bad at all. I'm totally okay with that. I'm happy with that actually. Could use a few more guns. You guys aren't very good. Motorized. Where are we at for production units? We need some motorized. We we'll get some trains. Get some support equipment as well. Overall, not bad. People's Union. Man, it's anything less from the mutiny. We could start reading about that, but let's wait a little bit. Um, gotta wait, gotta wait, gotta wait. Which does kind of suck. I hate waiting. Come on, someone try to loot us, please. Please, please, please. More, way more stability in uh, research speed. Factor up, it goes up too. We need to consume goods, goes up too. Huh. Alright. Less from the mutiny. While their ideology that brought out a mutiny, the disgraceful Salvin at rebellion against the Soviet Union was in the wrong place, and they were promptly crushed by the real revolution they shot to re sought to revolt against. Perhaps we should take some notes of their tactical ability against us. The ability for the rebels to arm 70s and 40s is a curious one, and one we should be opening commissions into. We need to analyze how they were able to achieve what they had managed to and see how they can, how we can adopt that to the Soviet Union's army. While Salvinites might not have been good at their using their tactics effectively, the Soviet Union will happily rebrand as their own and use it more efficiently. Yeah. More party. It's a party here. For the development, and we'll go with investments. Trainer troops would be nice and all, but no guarantee they'll actually get a lot there. Secure control. 
It's not terrible. Let's focus on research. Oh, we can do that to start improving academic base, because why not? And we don't want to spend too much political power, because we'll need all this later. We have so much electricity from the hydroelectric dam. Which I love, love, love. A strengthen mandate. Now, can we read anybody yet? No. Oh! Ah, that's supposed to happen, yeah. Amur's going to get split into two. Uh, playing as Amur is very difficult. Would not recommend. And the story is great. But Amur itself is just god awful trying to play as them. Army finding self thinking it out. Exercise. These guys don't have enough supply, which makes sense. Happy October! <clears throat> well, that's a tremendous spirit. What was the driving force behind the rebellion, comrades? It was their hopes and desire of top in the administration of the Union, and superseding it from their own government that had inspired them to revolt. We must take some notes from what they gave the rebellious Salvinets to help to take over, and note that what we could gain from learning how they had formed their desire to replace the Soviet Union with their flawed system. If we can ignite that same level or light of patriotism, not for Salvin, but rather for the people of Russia within the Union, then we have much to gain from this, comrades. Ah, yes. Oh, there goes Schmittler. Goodbye, Schmittler. Industry. Point 11. Still not bad. 10% debt to GDP ratio. It's alright with me. Well, since we're here. Lessons from Selvin? Well, the Selvin did what was absolutely disgraceful betrayal of what the Soviet Union stood for. It would be our key, inner key interest to investigate his policies and possibly gain some benefit if applied. It would be deemed necessary to implement some minor reforms that originated from Salvin's system in order to increase their popularity among his former supporters and make some usage out of the ideas he had fostered, of course. And so everything begins. Go ahead. Oh, it's lagging. No wonder, I'm like, why is it not going? Oh, they must have. Oh, they must have already used their loot. Oh, no. So that must be what we can't do sometimes. They have zero loot, which is unfortunate. Then why are we allowed to do that? I don't understand. You waste your time with this crap. Our tactical lessons. If you want to better tactical lessons, please go ahead. Which I'm pretty sure I read before as well. Focus on our own strengths. State. Focus on our own strengths. It's incredibly stupid that we can't just do this. Whoa. Get us in the battle, man. Failed because of the game. I should get another reform here too soon as well. 1.65 is just not bad at all. Holy crap. Man, I hate the month for between all October 1963 to November. Because it just likes so hard. And I have nothing running in the background except uh, OBS and stuff like that. OBS and File Explorer. Pretty much it. But, in theory, we should definitely do okay for the rest of the this regional stage until we have to actually march across different places, so. Ah, Himmler. Come on, Hadrish. Ah. Mm. I'll go this one right now. Well, would you look at that. We believe in Bukharanism right now. Committee for safe security. State security. More stability. More encryption. Plus 50% more encryption as well. And more decryption. And plus 50% more decryption too. We love the numbers. Well. They'd be a piece. They'd be a piece as well. Well, they're doing okay. Amur definitely lives in big time right now. 
I want to go to war, man. 3,000 manpower. You probably have, like, none. 14,000, actually. Well, oh, you guys have none, too. It's not bad. And then lessons from Soblin. If you want to about this one, please go right ahead. Give them a reason to serve us. Yes, please. And continuing course. The safety of our union was threatened by the revolt of the Soblinites. However, with our fall comes a new opportunity to strike out into our, into our former territory. Time is coming to once again set our eyes upon the motherland, and soon we will bring the light of socialist revolution and power to the proletariat. Once East is secured with the righteous forever might, we shall move deeper and deeper into the lost heartland and drive the traitors who abandoned the Union back, either into retreat or into the ground. With the spirit of guidance of the legitimate leader of the Union, coming to go to our failure in the brutal complex to come is a near impossibility. The rise of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics will once again let us stand alone as a shining beacon in the darkness of the world. Pretty much. Please, just let me beat him up. That's all I want. Literally all I want. I have no planes. God damn it. Whatever. We'll deal with it. Valve's looking nice and blue. Camarova looking pretty thick as well. PRC's definitely going to struggle. Tavira Republic. Borman's doing alright. Spear's doing quite well, I'd say. Goring is doing... Oh, what the heck happened over here? Why is Spear over here? Huh. Order stop bugging, but happy 19. 64, everybody. New year, new us. New debt. Oh, boy. I just want to raid, man. I don't want to get raided. I just want to raid other people. Alright. A little more than two months. Lesson from Papa Sablin. Yeah, just kind of hanging out. Really, there's not much going on. Look at this division. Just kind of hanging out. You're not very good in the hills. That's only minus 0.5 percent. Uh, rivers, more movement, less attack, more defense though. That's pretty nice. Continuing course. Nice. I traded words. If you remember this, please go right ahead. Let's go figure something out. How are they doing? Yeah, they're doing all right. I think the PRC is going to lose, though. Kemerovo versus Tomsk. More party stability? Yes, please. 1.63 is not bad. Oh, well, that sucks. Everyone hates the PRC. Do you actually have loot this time? Don't think we need to move a division, even though it's over a river. We should still do okay. One more day. And... Oh my god. No, no, we still can't do it. No, that's still glitched. What the heck? Yeah, I'm done with Saka. That makes literally no sense. This literally makes no sense. Why is it so glitched? Are they in a, are they in a group of someone else? They might be in a group of someone else. No, they're not. They're by themselves. Ugh, come on. That's so not cool. They're just wasting your time with nothing. It's wasting your command power. So stupid. And it's not just Ir Irkutsk. It's other warlords I've done before. and that it's just, We still have the same issue. Why is that still in the game? A bug like that. Why? Didn't make no sense. I like that both have no map, but we'll see what happens very soon. Come on. And continue the course. If you're going about reclaiming the Union, please go ahead. Failure is not an option. We're throwing a hole. The restoration of the Far East or Union is paramount before we set our eyes westward to our beloved heartlands. To these slides, the lands of reaction is a fascist. These are people who idealize the rush of old before the revolution. These are people who idealize a very system that brought a proud nation to its knees. This indignity, indignity cannot be allowed to stand. Through iron fire, we will show them that we are strong, that we have always been strong. From here to Kamchatka, our beloved socialist ideals will cause the hearts of the proletariat so wrongfully suppressed by the fascists of the false Tsar to store for the first time in years. To this end, the soldiers of the Union must be turned to men of iron. Their weapons must become the instruments of a fiery revolution. Iron rather than bastard. 
In the north lies a virtually unknown frontier where bandits and beasts alike stalk their prey. Every citizen of the Union is a beast, or is beaten, robbed, or killed as a serious insult to every member of the Soviet Union. Our priority now that should be to be transformed the frontier into a veritable fortress against the northern wolves who might make victims or citizenry. With enough men, guns, and concrete, we can make sure that an assault from our north would be in fool's air, and hopefully with enough time and resistance to their excursions into our newly reclaimed territory, we may prove that they are fruitless endeavors and efforts, and stop them all together. And there go the Jews. Failed because the game screwed us up. I'm done with you. I'm not touching that one ever again. At least for this campaign. Cheat has at least one. Oh, relax media censorship. That'd be very nice. I think I did research facilities yet. I hate this. Why can't we get just go and get involved? What? I wish that these were just a little bit more opened up so we can, if we want to go to war immediately, then we can. I... Prepare for the struggle. Just let us go, bro. We're a dictatorship right now. Just let us go. Prepare for the struggle. The final battle to the east. Oh, if you want to listen to, please go ahead. Uh, lies to the east of the Soviet Union. The fascists who lie on the coast, the Axis to the sea, the ports that were stolen from the people backed by godforsaken Japanese to the south. But that support no longer exists. That line is severed. People of the Soviet Union begin to prepare. Destiny awaits, and it sits along the Siberian coast of Borders Pacific. Our land that was taken from the people against their will, and you need to feel the disgraceful operations the fascists are doing. This time, the people will remind the fascists where they belong, and the Soviet Union will make sure that they are sure of it, even if it means we do point a gun barrel in their mouth to do so. Soviet Union marks and destroy all the fascists once and for all. Well, we're ready to go, but the game is like no. This is going to increase by two, but it never increases by two. I hate waiting like this. Prepare for the struggle. Well, we've been preparing for the struggle this entire time. Come on. Come on. Dispatch of commissars. Uh, ready the industry. Workers of the Union, be prepared. Our final fight for the Far East dawns upon us. A battle of liberating our fellow peers from the grasp of the fascists to the east while the army fights them directly. The workers will be the ones to create the tools of war that will fuel the fight. We need to get everything ready and in order. The production of guns that will be used to kill the enemies of the people must be kicked into the high gear. The resources that will fuel the production of these said guns will need to be extracted and processed. The fact is that it will house the creation of weapons. We need every Soviet that is capable of working on the front lines of industry. While the brave men on the front lines against the fascists will fight, the ones that will stay home and work in the factories will contribute to the fight just as much as the ones on the battlefield. Nine divisions is more than enough for this. 0.15, still not bad. That is going up quite a bit, but who cares? Just let us go to war. Why do we waste our time for this stuff? Dispatch of Commissars. Our reclamations of these lands we lost may be fast, but we cannot know for sure that the lands we can take back for the people might contain fellow comrades following the revolution. We need to make sure that people who live in the land we take back will support us. And, and that is not the case. We must send NKVD commissars into the field to ensure that. Whether it be through violent or more peaceful means, convincing measures. The people who reside within a newly regained territory cannot be made people who have betrayed the Union. Fascists, monarchists, and Nazis, whatever else the people might have turned to, we need to make sure that our lands are filled not with them, but with people of the revolution and of communism. Way more recovery rate. Lose wars. Part, wait, we good amount of defense for three years. Not bad. A thousand more manpower. Pretty decent. Just let us go to war, man. We got a lot more war support now, though, which is actually pretty good. Of course, it helps with more world tension, too, but still. Rest infrastructure, I mean, I'd like to, but. Meh. Meh. Um, sure. Why not? Ooh, Magadan's doing kind of well here ish. A letter of unions. 1.69 is still pretty good, though. Basic motorized. Very good, very good. Are we actually making motorized now? Yes, we are. That's great. Experiment with helicopters. Um, I want fighters and cast before the helicopters and stuff like that. Already the industry. Streamline the supply chain. To fuel the reclamation of our former lands in the Far East, our supplies must be able to get to the necessary locations as smoothly as possible, and ideally, without any interruptions or mishaps caused. Could you consider what would happen if our guns went into the hands of a would-be betrayer of the revolution? Gather the workers of the Union and get them to work and make sure these instructions are loud and clear. Build the roads that we uh, we will draw uh, across. Construct the railroads we will deliver through. Standardize equipment we will use. 
Prepare the infrastructure necessary to store supplies. The Soviet Union will gladly thank any comrade in the revolution that helps the field of cause further. These distances across the beer are vast, but with the help of the people, we can make them even shorter. Prepare... Uh, oh. Ah. These guys, Avalon, are coming aboard. We're just getting something done. Ooh. Relax me to censorship. And I look me up here. I'll do this one first. Why not? More party influence. Why not? Yes, why not? Pricky dick is gone. We almost have a billion in GDP, too. Almost 3% growth. Oh, wow. It just shot up. Nice. Inflation's 1%. That's pretty good, too. Dispatch commissars. Streamline that there supply chain. Uh, anything else here? <clears throat> Not one step back. Sounds familiar. To the brave Soviets spreading the revolution back to the areas under the filthy fascists, remember this is the fight the Union is not ready to lose for the glorious revolution to succeed and for the will of the people to prevail over all others. Not a single step back will be permitted. And those are trees. Do not let the fascists of the Far East win. We, the people, are ready to throw as much as we can at them just to prove that the revolution is not the right to bear to be messing with. If this means we are sending our men to die in the fields of Siberia, then these men will be remembered as heroes of the Union. The ones who brought justice and liberated the workers, suffering under the fascists, and helped to restore the Union closer towards our former glory. Nice. Very nice, actually. What's the uh, equipment like, like right now? The ledger, our logistics. We need more guns. Crap. Go three. We have a lot of anti tank. Look at that. Huh. Kamarovo is struggling definitely here, but they're not doing too bad. Uh, Borman's doing quite well. This thing not really has changed too much. It looks like Goring is maybe losing a little bit. Never mind. They're, they're, everyone's killing off Speer now. And Hadrich, well, he's kind of screwed now, too. I'm halfway tempted to just click on this one. And the Far Eastern Campaign. <clears throat> Finally, with an industry prepared and our men ready to die for the good of the revolution, there's only one step left. Advance. Move forward. Soldiers of the Union, our test begins across the fascists to the east, or against the fascists to the east. And show them no mercy and slaughter them all. Look at that. March forward into their houses of cards and knock them all over, kick the front doors of each and every one in, and shoot the owners in the head. The revolution, revolution returns to the Far East, and we are ready to be here to stay. The people will show how they will prevail without the need of turning to such disgusting ideologies. Remind them all about how glorious Russia used to be under communism. You get the Far East campaign too? More speed, less division, winter attrition, better non combat supply penalties, and better terrain penalty reduction for a year? Not bad. Alba, and then elect a new premier next. Nice. Good stuff. Why not? Might as well. Let us go. Cheetahs slowly losing, but we want their bodies. We love their bodies. What are we missing here? Motorized? Yeah, that's what I thought. Not a single step back, man. All right. Barson campaign. 20 more days left. Not bad. And then we we'll also want to build some infrastructure here too. A lot of resources here, which is pretty nice. Empire of Manchuria. Who's leading the Empire of Manchuria? Asian Puyoro, Puyoro, Guppy, Guppy, Puyi. Oh, cool. There goes Papa JFK. Nope, not tempting me with that. More stability, why not? I'm gonna get to 100. Oh, and there it goes, Central Siberia. Town School, that could be actually worse. That could be a lot worse. Ooh, Town School is unified by who? Cesar? Ah, Pasternak. No. No, no. Sakura. Okay. Oh, good luck, y'all. You're gonna need it. Which means we gotta fight them. Crud. Extremely high deficit. Yeah, that's kinda higher than normal. Guys of the North, if you wonder about that, put your head. It's gonna be a little annoying, but whatever. We got five days left. Come on. Five thirty-one. <clears throat> Low manpower, pretty normal. And who can remember this was great as well. The road to victory will be played with blood. Operation Pluto. Huh. Operation Neptune. 
Uh, the area of Nagutsi is one of vital potential importance to the development of the Soviet Union, providing us with the potential to gain many, many natural resources if we were to integrate them into our sphere. But we need to do it fast. The fascists cannot be allowed to get to the diamond producing state before we do. The precious resources that we could gather and use to help further move the revolution to the future will be of spectacular importance to the furthering our cause, as long as we can do it in time. We'll prepare the Soviet army to invade Yakutia, and we'll begin to draft plans for Saka ASSR. Once we've occupied the region, we must integrate it as soon as possible. Yeah, might as well. I don't think I've ever done that one, because every time I take that one, then these guys usually die. We'll see. And shining bright. That once we owned, of course. Or, uh, Operation Uranus? Uranus? Yeah, why not? But the Union began flourishing again. We require sea access once more. And what better way to regain our access than to march east and eliminate the threats that reside along the coastline? The people will require their access to the coast to Siberia and the fresh air of the Pacific Ocean so that we may export the revolution's influence further. We'll also gain the ability for some important of necessary materials if need be. Our main industry are ready. We must begin to draft our plans for the Operation Uranus, or Uranus. That's a simple task. I'll limit the army of our eastern opponents, walk in and take it back for the revolution and capture the leader. After we've done as such, we can restore the old old blast before we're right, of right where they belong. Back into the hands of the people and the eastern threat completely eliminated. And there goes Speer. Didn't even really have a chance this campaign, but you know what? Spare goes bye-bye. Can't win in every campaign. The workers, ah, the Federation. The revolt has happened. I foresee no problems with this one. No manpower, two divisions, so. Um, Operation Umbro. If you want to worry about this one, please go right ahead, as well as No Mercy. Well, actually, we'll probably do this one. We'll worry about this one. Ariel? Cheetah, huh? Operation Ariel. The state of Cheetah exists through a far east and occupies territory that possesses vital resources to our needs. The solution is obvious and simple. Prepare the people's army, prepare our guns, and march towards them and go to war. It seems they need a reminder on how the revolution always prevailed over the, Re the Russian monarchy, and so we must initiate Operation Ariel. The time is finally come to take back a rifle lance, confront the monarchists, hoping to restore the Tsar. Huh, <laughs> let's see if they can actually do that. Alright, we're we missing anything here. Efficient, efficiency. I want to do equipment. Blue Water Navy. I can't do anything yet. That's fine. Whatever. How are we doing? Auto saving. Happy uh, October. Oh. Yeah. If you're worried about against the fascists, please go right ahead. Not one step back. Operation Miranda, huh? That'll get us direct access there. Taking out Cheetah will be very easy for us all. So, so right now, let's not do a focus. I want to take off or take out Yukutia first. War taxes would not be bad. Don't really have to do it though. Or we could just say, screw it, you guys come over here. Um, there we go. We could do that too. There we go. Be nice. Yeah, these guys are not very strong right now, which is fine with us. Well, let's go into this one. Then, shining bright. The Akuts weren't have been reintegrated into the Soviet Union, and with their liberation, we've also rescued the fortunes hoarded by the disposed warlords. Famous for its massive diamond deposits, uh, Yakutsi is a mighty, mightily worth prize, worthy prize for the General Secretary, and the proceeds of its riches could send or fund for the campaigns across Siberia. Yeah, the General Secretary is a benevolent and caring leader, and always puts the interests of his people first. The riches won by Yagodia, or Yagoda and Yakutia will go back to the Yakuts, hoping to show the conquered people that they are not subjects to a new regime, but free people living in a strong state that looks out for its citizens, or the interests of its citizens. Eventually. Yeah, they got division. That's fine. Whatever. No one cares. Cheetah. Cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. So now we can do it like this. Go straight for it. Straight for it. You're not allowed to lose. You're gonna force the attack? Because I don't care. You lose there, you lose. There they go, nice. See, now I can do training bright. Yeah, 
Go right on in. As we probably should start recording that, shouldn't we? Yeah. Hey, I kept you there, Great job, guys. Sins of a roots, if you want to put that, please go ahead. The Lord's Word, that's what we serve. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't right now. In the meantime, no, 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 no. You want a defensive front line. There you go. Hey, a port. And Operation Miranda. Oh, we are preoccupied with the treasonous revolters, the reactionary collaborationist factions to resolve their power struggle with the violence. Now, the moderate fascist Mikhail Matkovsky, a seasoned soldier against his own people, controls the coast under the mantle of the former reformed Russian fascist party. Mikovsky's lack of principles are breathtaking, initially helping the Japanese oppress the people of the Far East. He now is painting himself as a loyal client of the U.S. Not even an inch of the Soviet Union can be allowed to remain in the hands of the fascist parasites. The NKVD will purge the Far East of these nationalist traitors and restore it to popular control in 2nd July. The Tsars of Chita, while they may not be as evil as the fascists and Nazis of the world, are still a roadblock in the revolution, but the monarchy could always lead back to the will of the people taking over the country, just like other people did in 1922. Mikhail's government will be put on trial for betraying the revolution and running back to those sad ideals such as monarchism, and will not be treating them any differently than we did the Romanovs back then. As for Mikhail, we will be giving him a special trial. Down in the basement under the court he goes, with the barrel of a gun pointed at the back of his head, and with the fire of the gun, Mikhail is finally the Tsar of Russia he wished to be. be. Or wished to be. Yeah, there goes Borman winning the wars. Like new premier? Sure. A new premiere. Oh, yeah. The fall of the premiere. Yagoda had never felt so powerless inside his own government anymore for years. Few had dared to challenge his authority, much less people from within the regime. Yet now, there goes Borman. He watched in amazement at what perhaps the first meeting of the Presidium, where it was not a simple rubber stamp, the power of the NKVD is questioned. The decree had been proposed from an anonymous member, the only executive body in eastern Siberia, knowing that they would have been effortlessly targeted and persuaded by the NKVD. Whoever was beyond this panel was careful not to reveal their identity, at least before the document was presented to all Presidium members, for you go to it was too late now. He knew that all deputies and their inclinations better the most, and the outcome of this vote was, of course, certain. Who was in favor of the dismissal of Yakov Solovich uh, Agronov as the premier of the Soviet Union? Almost everyone raised their hands. Less than a few who did not, out of fear, soon changed their minds, making the result of the vote, besides two persons, unanimous. One was Yagoda, still not eager to idly follow the wishes of the party. As for the other, it was Agronov himself. The president had taken advantage of a temporary absence of his in, in order to initiate this vote without his knowledge. Yagoda was aware that the presence of every single deputy was not necessary to pass a decree, a loophole that had previously proven extremely useful in the past, but had come back to bite him. Having been left with no other choice, he slowly raised his hand in approval. Effective immediately, Comrade Agronov is dismissed of his duties by the order of Presidium. He replaced by Sergei uh, Alexevich Bestinov as Premier of the USSR. No longer was Yagoda's right hand man in power. He had lost at last. The party was in control. How the tables have turned, and no mercy for Nazis. Rozhevsky, the bandit king, the leader of the now former state of Admur, betrayer of the Russian people, and now merely nothing but a rat under the thumb that represents the will of the people under the revolution. We cannot let the trials of Rozhevsky's government go into the favor in, in any way, no matter how minor we have it or let it. No, we will not allow the fascists to breathe any, another day. We are the people of Russia, the Union. I say we show absolutely no mercy to the former government of Amur. We will make sure that absolutely no one, no one leaves the trials without any punishment. If Rozhevsky pushes his luck too far in the trial to prove his whatever non-existent innocence he may claim, a thumb that represents the well for the revolution and the justice for Russia will crush a rat's skull with that same thumb. You know what? We need division. We need manpower, so goodbye. going. You should do okay here. If these guys were smart, they would actually probably attack here and try to actually encircle divisions, but you know what? The AI is incredibly stupid. Just like this division is incredibly stupid. Just go straight from Agadon. Why would you put all three divisions here, man? It makes no sense. No mercy for the Nazis. If you want to be this, please go ahead. He finally became the Tsar he wanted, though not as implied or imagined. Not as he imagined. The end of the Whites. The Whites, not content with the first loss of the Red Army, decided to avenge themselves on the people of Russia with the aid of fascist foreign powers. Well, for over well a decade, the ravaged the Far East, installing corrupt, thuggish governments that brutalized the working class. That era is over now. We, the Soviet Union's rawful successors, purged them just as fiercely as their predecessors purged their first generation. With the region finally free of their taint, we can begin organizing and integrating their territories, bringing back the old provincial boundaries, and setting up local governments will make it almost as harsh as if the harsh years of fascist rule had never happened in the first place. Keep going in, guys. You're doing great. Actually, if anything, go there first. Take that uh, radar station if you can. Hey, George Wallace. Hey. I love George Wallace. A little bit of Wallace in my life never hurt me at all. 4,000 versus 3,000. Wow, we're sucking here pretty hard. 
Numbers for Nazis. They have no manpower. The Trav Rajevsky. If you remember that, please go ahead. Oh, it's done. Nice and done. Hey, more manpower. Look at that. Nice. Very good. Go right there. Pretty much circle the entire army here, too. Port of Magadon captured? Great! Wait. We're not even close to Magadon, though. We're not even close to the port, but whatever. Just make sure we don't get encircled here. Good! Oh, man, that was close. We almost got encircled there. Well, I can still encircle us here, too, but whatever. Going, you ding-a-dongs! You ding-a-dongs! As long as you go over here, that'd be really great. And then we can fight these guys by themselves, hopefully. End of the Whites. And Operation Pluto. The divine mandate to the north of us is a sham of the Russian people and a block on the road for the revolution. But this does not mean that we cannot deal with the issue. All they own is a Siberian waste, so they'll make much our, our job much easier dealing with these uh, religious fanatics. We can simply knock on the door of whatever small building they have and point a gun at their leader's head, and they'll immediately surrender to us. The Soviet Union would be glad to accept the people under the mandate back into the revolution and to eliminate whatever small threat they may hold against us. It surely can't be that difficult to defeat some extremist worshippers huddling around a church. Well, you'd be surprised, man. Hey, two and a half percent, not two percent, not one percent, but two and a half. Not quite like milk. Yeah, be sixty-five though. Just realized it was sixty-five. There you go. Kill them all off. That's all I ask. Don't let them move. That's all I ask. Can we go in? Come on. It's just Magadon. It's not gonna hurt you too much. Just enough. Keep him in place. There you go. Now that's not bad. And then Mikowski. Our fight for the Far East has subsided at the moment. Mikhail Mikowski and his fascist followed fought like cornered rats, but the streets of Magadha are now strewn with their bodies. At the moment, Mikowski himself is alive and in custody. That shall soon change. The leaders of the Russian fascist party will receive a trial befitting their betrayal of the Russian people. Their prospective verdict and sentence are obvious, but the punishment of these traitors will be a fine example to anyone who even entertains their ideas. Anyone who puts the Soviet Union in jeopardy will be hunted down with prejudice and given exactly what they deserve. Integrate them immediately. We don't have a lot of man- Well, actually, we have quite a bit of manpower now. Which is pretty darn nice. Not bad. And you guys are kind of a weird combat width, but whatever. Oh, we have no more army XP, of course. Yeah, these guys aren't bad, though. And these guys are 21 combat width, which it could be better, of course, but still. We have a lot of equipment. Hold we have a lot of equipment now. We're going to struggle against the Divine Mandate of Siberia, I'm already going to tell you. Definitely going to struggle here at least a little bit. Can we ra raid them? Why can't we raid them? They must have no. Oh, no. They're at war with Kamchatka. Well, if you want to be that, please go ahead. Slippery dude. Operation Pluto. War for the peasantry? I guess we won't read about these. It seems our plans to combat the mandates caused some issues, as we as have the peasants sympathetic to the cause of men are voting against us. This is troubling for the stability of the Union. We cannot sit around and let these peasants spread their religious ideals around. Uh, come on. Uh, the Soviet Union. We must deal with this immediately before they get out of hand and the more than they already are, or else we could risk all of our efforts being not and us collapsing in on ourselves. And we cannot let the fires of the revolution be extinguished. Honor the peasants. If you're about this one, please go ahead. But honor the peasants. People of the Union. We stand here today against rival, father men, and disgusting clique of followers, aiming to reduce Russia's glory and limiting what the people are all capable of. With an ongoing conflict with the mandate, we need to remember our pride of the revolution. Do not let the disgraceful ideals of men get to your head. Religion is what limits the potential of Russia and her people. Pushing aside these ideals of the religion, and everyone can achieve greatness in the Soviet Union. Comrade, everyone, come everyone in the Union, and let us deal a crushing blow to religion and liquidate the Church of Men and its fanatic revolters. I'll go with that one. The war against a demagogue. Ah, oh, comrades, let us observe the tactics of the forces of men. They have lived in the Siberian wasteland and have expert knowledge on how to fight and survive in the health hole. They defend with their life. We need to take some hints from how they fight us and learn from them, even if their ideology is insane, and their skill of war in, is, in the waste is something to be acknowledged. The Soviet Union soldiers must adapt to this new hostile environment where infrastructure is non-existent, and the supporters of the mandate could have an advantage over us if we are not too careful with how we tread. Our tactics must change to be more accommodating with the waste to ensure that victory can be ours, and we can show these fanatics a true only path to Russia, revolution, also weather training. The ways of Siberia where Father Men and his religious followers fight us are too cold, empty and devoid of any major infrastructure. Even for our soldiers, this cannot handle 
They cannot handle the environment, and it could be very thing that costs us our victory over the mandate. We must begin enacting special training programs for our soldiers. Our army must learn how to continue to press onwards and fight, even in the devoid areas of the mandate's territory. The fanatics in the north might have that advantage over us, and we need to get rid of them of it. All training operations from here on out will require soldiers to participate in a mandatory program that will train them in how to survive in the vast wastelands of Father Man's territory. May we train for some excellent new soldiers that will allow us to fly the Red Banner of the Revolution higher above men's borders. And just another revolt. The revolt of the peasants in the Soviet Union uh, that turned in the support of men and his followers is nothing new to us. We have crushed the revolt of the Salvin and his followers already and we will crush another yet. March forward, comrades. The peasants who have turned on the mandate's ideologies are nothing more than betrayers of the revolution and of Russia. We'll wipe them out, just like how we will destroy Father Men, and a support base and assert dominance over the Far East. Civilians of the Union, continue business as per usual. This revolt is nothing special. We'll be easily wiped out. And then back in the USSR. Today, a fantastic milestone by the people of the Soviet Union was finally achieved. The Union has finally and rightfully claimed its land in the Far East and a red band of fly side. The power of the people triumphs above all once more, and Russia is reminded of the revolution that is the only way forward for the Union. Yeah, this is just a first step to reclaiming your name on the world stage. Celebrate as much as you want, comrades, but soon enough it will be time for some March West and retake Russia from the ones claiming ownership of the Union. Whatever beliefs that may, may, they may have turned to, the revolution will remind them of the glory of the Union had, and we will crush them. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. When obviously we'll end up going to war with Father Men and uniting the Far East. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.